Welcome to this month's Q&A and today's question and answer is a very popular one especially this time of the year and that is my squash, pumpkins, zucchini, my cucurbit family is only producing male flowers. Freaking out, what now? Stay tuned, I'm going to speak to you about what some of the reasons are and what you can do to bring on the female flowers. So I'm flanked on this side and this side by beautiful yellow patty pans that are currently only producing male flowers. There is a reason for it though, and I'm gonna go into some of the reasons now, but I want to show you what it looks like and that even though I am growing very successfully in this urban garden space of mine, I still have issues with only male flowers being produced. Let's go into some of the reasons and bring you in close so you can see that you are not alone in the struggle. So I want to cover two sections in this Q&A. Firstly, why you are only getting male flowers. And then secondly, what you can do to bring on some more female flowers to ultimately get a harvest. So let's get started with the first one, which is why is my plant only producing male flowers? And there can be quite a few different reasons for it. Firstly, the age of your plant. If within the first one, two, pushing even into three months of growth within your plant, you can find that it's only producing male flowers. And that is because the plant actually isn't mature enough or strong enough to produce the female flowers. To be able to produce a female flower, it actually needs to create the little fruit at the bottom of the flower, which takes a huge amount of energy from the plant. So the plant actually needs to be in a space where it can produce the females all the way through to maturity. So if it's not ready to do that, it won't produce female flowers. It will then only produce male flowers as part of the process because to produce a male flower takes significantly less energy and effort from the plant's point of view. So it'll keep doing that until it has all the energy and the environmental factors are what it needs to then start pushing out female flowers. And then once it starts doing that, you're just gonna have little fruits popping out everywhere. So if it's in terms of the age of the plant, sit tight, you will get there. The second reason is environmental factors causing stress. And for me, there are three things to consider here. Heat, cold, and water. Any of those three extremes, high, low, you're going to have female flowers disappear. Now, for me, in my garden, we have just gone through a hectic, hectic heat spell of almost a week of 35 degrees Celsius temperatures, sometimes even up to 39. Now, as soon as the plant hits those kinds of temperatures, they tend to withdraw and store their energy and not produce female flowers. You'll also find, depending on where your plants are in the gardens, whether it's a pumpkin, a squash, in the squash family, zucchinis, patty pans, you name it, there's so many different varieties. Any of those, depending on where they are in the garden, if they're exposed to that hectic daytime high, you'll see the leaves starting to droop and wilt, and you can see they are getting super stressed. These plants get more than enough water, they are in drip irrigation, so water I know is not the problem. The heat was the problem, and they were producing female flowers and fruits, but for the last two weeks they've just gone flat and they are only producing male flowers. So I know that's because of the heat that we had, but the plant is stressed and it's reserving its energy until the environmental factors relating specifically to temperatures start stabilizing again. Then in terms of the cold, which for us in South Africa and especially me in Cape Town, we luckily don't have that issue. But if you are further, further north or even inland in South Africa and you get a random cold spell, it can also impact the strength of the plant and on the opposite extreme to heat, inhibit the plant's production and growth and ultimately then reserve the female flowers and continue to push out male flowers and if it's too cold produce no flowers so cold same as heat and the opposite extreme will do the same thing another important one is watering if you have inconsistent watering or the plant gets too dry it'll also pull back its energy and not produce the female flowers with the fruits 
Like I said, it takes a lot of effort to produce a female flower with the fruit on it to then ultimately put all of the energy into keep building that fruit until it's fully mature. So the plant needs to know that everything is ready and it's perfectly capable of pushing through until the end. And if it knows that it's not going to get water regularly or it is actually suffering from too little water, then it's not going to produce your female flowers that you want to fill your bellies with homemade yummy goodness. And the third thing is fertilizing. If you have this beautiful, sprawling, abundant, green, squash, pumpkin, cucumber plant, it's beautiful. However, if you have been feeding it a nitrogen-rich fertilizer, that's what it's going to do. It's going to look green and it's going to look beautiful and it's just going to shoot out. But if you've been in any organic homegrown gardening environment for a while, you'll know that luscious, green, abundant growth does not equal food. It equals beautiful growth. So you need to then check the environment that it's in. If it's in a very high nitrogen environment or it's potentially followed a very high nitrogen fixing crop, be aware that you need to make sure that you are adding in something like bone meal or any balanced fertilizer that is kind of neutralizing the nitrogen factor, bringing in some of the phosphorus and potassium so that you're leveling out those macronutrients so it's the plant isn't getting so much nitrogen and too little of something else that all it can actually do is just push growth, growth, growth. And only once it's getting enough of the, the potassium and the calcium and all the other nutrients is it going to start producing the female flowers. That is one that is quite often overlooked and is a very important factor in producing female flowers. So check your fertilizer, check the environment and make sure you are giving it balanced fertilizer. And if it's too much, give it some bone meal or phosphorus, calcium, potassium rich compost or fertilizer just to get that fixing of the nitrogen levels right and then you'll see your female flowers just sprawl out everywhere and you're gonna have an abundance of food wow and this is the joys of gardening in Cape Town it just started raining so great for the plants luckily it's still nice and warm but let's move on to point number two which is what can you do to bring on more female pumpkin and squash flowers? That is a big question a lot of people are asking. So now that we know what causes it, let's see what we can do to fix it. Firstly, let's look at watering. Try and create as much consistent watering as possible. If you can, try get a drip irrigation system in place. It just creates a really steady flow and constant moisture level in the soil. If you need to water, you don't want to water overhead because then you're quite easily spreading um, powdery mildew spores. So if you are watering with a wand or a hose or something, water from the bottom, but water deep so that the roots can go down and get all the water they need. Don't just do quick little surface level waterings. And then quite an important one is give it some shade. It is a full sun plant, but that being said, it's full sun, not full African sun. Our African sun is brutal and six to eight hours of direct 30 to 40 degree temperatures in Africa is completely different to 30 to 40 degrees direct sun in the northern hemisphere. So in the southern hemisphere where we are, I find morning all the way up to 12, 1 o'clock sun is more than enough for these pumpkins and squashes and then the harsh afternoon sun in the shade really really works well and um, i'm also showing you some some previous footage of these two behind me that were busy flowering and getting the female flowers before the heat wave came on but you'll see that even with them being in afternoon shade they still firstly producing female flowers and secondly they still stopped producing based on the heat so it's going to happen at some point in time if you have heat wave spikes just deal with it and be patient and your crop will arrive. Then let's look at the other option of fertilizing. Make sure that you use a balanced fertilizer. The Talborn Organics fruit and flower is really, really nice. I really like using BioOcean from Atlantic Fertilizers. Um, I like, I personally like using 
fish and ocean based fertilizers. Um, it's just a matter of preference. But the Talborn Organics fruit and flower was also an incredible, incredibly good balanced fertilizer. But in essence, give them balanced fertilizer and give them fertilizer because they are hungry plants. Like I said in the first step, if your plants are producing an abundance of growth and you're probably looking at a nitrogen heavy environment, then look at doing something like bone meal, which is then going to focus specifically on the phosphorus, calcium, potassium to build that up, not really emphasizing the nitrogen, just so you can create some kind of balance in, in your soil. So that was a nice quick Q&A on a very, very hot topic at the moment in South Africa and is a hot topic world over when it comes to hot summer temperatures. If you have any questions about growing pumpkin squash, you're, you're only getting male or female flowers, please let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely get back to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out to your communities. And please subscribe to my journey so that you can keep track of what I'm doing, the insights that I'm sharing, so we can all grow together as a community.